This meeting is being recorded. Hello, everyone. As you know, I'm Dan Winter, FractalField.com, FractalU.com. And today I'm joined by Professor Ralph Otterpole, who is a very important professor at the uh, Technical University of Hamburg <laughs> and uh, is uh, in charge of the wastewater treatment and engineering and is deeply involved in regenerative agriculture. And that's our theme today, regenerative agriculture and uh, restored centripetal forces and uh, the real definitions and meaning of fertility. Welcome, Professor Ralph. Yeah, well, Dan, it's an honor to talk to you. Uh, I'm a big fan. I follow your work. I'm a student of yours, uh, even without you knowing it, probably. And well, it's it's absolutely great to talk about soil, soil health, uh, regenerative agriculture and all. Uh, Professor Ralph is uh, deeply involved in uh, teaching uh, regenerative techniques in agriculture and is very sensitive to the spiritual aspects of agriculture and has a wide uh, network of people involved in those things around Germany. Uh, and also Professor Ralph is um, actively using a Therify system with his group there and just uh, started working with Imploder as well. So we're really delighted to welcome Professor <laughs> Ralph here. He's a real uh, you know, alternative agriculture hero in Germany. <laughs> Well, I hope so. It's uh, actually in uh, also a lot in Switzerland because Switzerland is ahead of Germany in uh, going regenerative because they have more of the small scale farms. Uh, so it's a matter of like uh, living rural structures where people really understand. But then as you live in France, France is even further ahead in these topics. Interesting. Uh, France and Australia, yes. And so initially we want to talk about uh, the serious science, even definition of what's meant by regenerative and agriculture. You know that I've been writing and teaching about negentropy and self-organization, which are in a way an electrical definition of regeneration and rejuvenation and what that means and essentially the concept of restored centripetal forces and how the magnetic lines create that. And Professor Ralph is deeply involved. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the, the um, concept of just looking at chemistry in agriculture is absolutely uh, ridiculous, basically. But it's a business model that has worked for the industry, but that has not worked for the farmers because the farmers go bankrupt because uh, their land is bad now. So it doesn't take up water anymore. It doesn't rain anymore. And... Uh, groundwater is getting polluted. That's me as a, as a water scientist. This is my field. We have to prevent this uh, crazy, uh, well, chemical uh, toxification of the land and also for the water restoration and that we keep a balanced climate. So the, the, the climate topic is a topic of uh, having rain, evaporation, uh, condensation and, and cloud formation, all that. And that's a matter of land use. So if we go to a Middle East or West Asia, what would be more appropriate? Uh, that was very green and, and very productive. And now it's, uh, it's mostly desert areas where life is harsh. And that's a matter of, of land use that was sort of uh, for uh, building the, 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 the uh, war ships for the wars, endless wars, and then they deforested the region and the rains were gone. <laughs> Yes, uh, Spain is an example. Exactly. The, mm -hmm. the, the Armada mean not, no more rain for Spain because the trees are gone. But, yeah. and, and yes, to talk about that in terms of our definition of regenerative, in terms of magnetics, we could use the example of what uh, Valerie and I have been doing very actively here in South France. We have a rainmaking team over here. Uh, you can read about our rainmaking projects at goldenmean.info slash rain and goldenmean.info slash labyrinth. Point being that if you very carefully douse for a strong magnetic line cross or dimple or blind spring or jed, and then you uh, place a seven circuit Cretan Minoan labyrinth with paramagnetic stones, and actually it becomes implosive, centripetal, it restores uh, the dimpling force and that restoration of centripetal force in long wave magnetics. I mean, it's actually proving, proven to create a uh, microclimate as in famous Bill Witherspoon's 
uh, Sri Yantra in the desert project, they created the microclimate because you have long wave magnetic lines. And we did that also in Torino. So that leads to our core concept of the day, which is how magnetic lines create centripetal force and all the things that we do to wound and hurt and cut these magnetic lines are fatal to fertility and rainmaking. Our friend here in South France was did a project on all the old ancient stone fences. And he actually suggested, it was Jason, fractalwater.com, that the ancient stone fences were on the magnetic lines and helped restore the magnetic fertility by restoring magnetic circulation. And as the old stone fences were torn apart, there went the fertility, there went the circulation of magnetic fertility, and there went the rain. And so much so that there's a famous example near here, uh, the Turinia Valley in Kanagu here, where there's a famous uh, uh, ancient Visigothic druidic site, which is actually a valve where you control the direction of magnetic flow down into the valley. And by controlling the passage of magnetic current into the valley, it's literally a switch for fertility. And all those ancient, very controlled, intentional magnetic rivers are now torn up because people don't understand that that massive centripetal force of geobiology, that the earth grid itself Dodeca ecosa is a longitudinal nodal array for that fertility. And that's what we want to get to today is how to restore that, the, that magnetic fertility by restored magnetic lines. And I know that you've been working on that, Professor, please. Well, yeah, just an example from uh, actually uh, yesterday. It was Sunday and we had our group meeting, Geomancy group. So on one hand, I'm, I'm also teaching Geomancy. Uh, but I also have a group in my own region because we are really drought prone now. We had always lots of rain in northern Germany, uh, but well, the, the, the months of, of, of uh, well, hot, uh, wet weather that was not having rain. And uh, so I read about your rainmaking uh, topic. And first I had this naive uh, thinking, well, we, we, we make a session on rainmaking and then it's done. Uh, but I learned that it's more than that. That's it's exactly as you pointed out, the functioning of the earth magnetic lines. And uh, then uh, also um, to have uh, the, um, well, the connection to it so that people really have a love for their environment and all that and my group um, and I have to say this is my private thing uh, that's not university related but uh, universities need to change they are too narrow now they go nowhere if they keep that narrow minded um, but that's a side and um, so we are working on this now so we had one uh, major line going here through the region that was cut by the German German border where there were many people killed and uh, so we were there to, to perceive what had happened and then restore by chanting and uh, just visualizing the re revival. And it's, uh, well, it's, it's uh, well, a bit, uh, it takes a bit time that these things are adjusting, but these are impulses that are important. And yesterday we were at a megalithic site nearby and uh, that was uh, sort of uh, deranged. And uh, so we, we did some uh, geomantic uh, repair work. And uh, then also uh, I could perceive that the construction, so I, I, I went to the time of the construction. So it was pre-diluge uh, from what I perceived. And uh, it was a shaman uh, who, who made that at the time, but, but his people didn't understand that. So they did it with a mixture of, of uh, awe and fear of him, but they never loved to, to move these gigantic stones, but they did and it did work, but people didn't get it at that time. And that's still the problem that people don't understand these uh, energy uh, supplies of all of, of all life, of plant life, uh, animal life, human life, of, of weather formation, things like that. But luckily, more and more people getting interested. So from when I started like GMNC 25 years back, that was very, very uh, absurd for many people. 
And uh, now it's like my classes on that are full. People are, and just mainstream people, they ne never had before uh, any contact and business people and uh, relatively few people from science because they are very much uh, excluding themselves from the new development or from understanding reality in a wider sense. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's so great that you're brave enough to do that and, and be a leader in that way. I, I would say on a practical level for people working on rainmaking, for example, that our famous film, you'll see it at Golden Mean, that emphasized rain where we, we saved a village in Brazil uh, which was a fire was coming and the kids did the the dousing and the, the spiral of crystals and the, the, the rainstorm came just in time and it really did happen. And we made a huge rainstorm uh, also in Trimorti. However, uh, and, and for, for there, we had a very intense focused group. And of course, when you have pure intention among kids, it's a great seed for that implosion. But when we did the, the magnetic work here, uh, we did uh, uh, serious labyrinths in two major villages, beautiful labyrinths. You'll see pictures, goldenmean.info slash labyrinth. But one more thing we found was that we had the benefit of a local geobiologist, actually Jan Lipnick, he's quite famous in South France. And he's also famous for seeing and talking to the local elementals, the, mm. the magnetic, the, we call them plasma intelligence. This plasma mm. intelligence is very real. And mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, it sounds strange for a scientist to say it, but there were some major elementals that were not happy locally. Actually, Jan seems to know the local dragons, these plasma beings by name, actually. And he came with us and did some serious negotiating. And uh, we were, we had tremendous success. I mean, we have restored our, we're in a rainforest environment. And a few months back, we were in a desert. So yeah. we're, we're very happy over here. But it's true that ignoring the elemental forces, realizing that plasma can be intelligent is very important. So that's another aspect. Well, that's absolutely amazing. And of course, we uh, are uh, also looking at the elementals, like talking to it is maybe something what not all are capable of. So that's a, for the bigger one. So I had that in Brussels at the, at the Royal uh, Palace. That was a very wise old uh, <laughs> elemental that had all the history uh, sort of uh, uh, in him. And that was sort of a uh, well con conversation. Uh, but of course, we look how happy they are. And very often, they are not. <clears throat> and also at this megalith, uh, megalithic site that we uh, visited yesterday, uh, the elementals were sort of waking up when we did our uh, uh, chanting and they started to be a sort of cooperative again because they were so much ignored and, and annoyed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's right. That's they, they, they say the elementals regard humans as drunk because we don't work with them. And yeah. yet, uh, you know, I would say in terms of the scientific understanding of how that communication works, uh, I point out that the the young people who learn, they go into this trance bliss state, usually in nature is best, and then their eye, they're blindfolded and they're able to see without their eyes. And they say a vortex forms inside their head and they, the center of the vortex uh, <clears throat> becomes an eyeball. <laughs> and we know that, that what that is, that's because that implosive plasma vortex inside or outside your head you inhabit an array, it's called your synapses, but then you can inhabit a larger array, it's called the lucid dream and successful death. Point is that those young people develop clairvoyance. And what clairvoyance is literally is coherent longitudinal interferometry in that array. And that's the coherent plasma, the compression nodes, which is the lifeblood of the elemental kingdom which is, of course, dead if they're surrounded by electrosmog and metal. But if you're in a forest. Mm. Yeah, but even in forest, there was so much war going on and, and people mm. slaughtered. And uh, this is ingrained in, in many regions, especially in Europe, with all our bloody wars. So we are culturally really absolute idiots to, to, to like not understand uh, how to live in harmony. That's right. And uh, so that's something where we are so, sort of now sort of uh, getting better because uh, more and more people understand these things. 
Yeah. What you are pointing out to become, become really clairvoyant, that's sort of the master level, what I haven't reached yet. But it's like uh, people should be aware that even being clear sentient, you can do a lot with that. And uh, sometimes uh, getting pictures, not expecting 3D cinema. It, it's like the pictures, you, you understand what is going on, even without uh, well being like um, like a movie and so we can do a lot more than we think and that's what I teach people and uh, my specialty is a bit to look at the larger systems and to bring this into the equation and besides that if we manage to restore the land by regenerative agriculture and that is combined with agroforestry what is what France is quite famous for uh, then this works hand in hand. So it's not just one level. So if we just repair the uh, earth magnetic lines uh, and um, well get in peace with the elementals, um, that is not sufficient. So we need to uh, get away from, uh, from harmful uh, agricultural practices and also organic farmers. For me, it's not about organic or, or like agrochemical. It's about everybody needs to go regenerative. We have to look at biology, chemistry, and the wider sense of physics. And uh, very few bring this together. Biodynamic is best at that. But even yeah. many biodynamic farms, they use the plow. This is horrible. So if you, if you always plow deeply, you destroy your soil, soil life. The soil fungi that are the backbone of a living soil supplying the plants, mycorrhizal fungi and all that, getting trace elements from deep down. And um, that is something where all farmers can get together behind regenerative farming. And so they mustn't be uh, like fighting each other. And it's not about like being certified, but we can measure this. So it, there is this uh, BRICS, you may know this, the BRICS value, that's uh, sort of the sugar content in they use it for grapes a lot. So it's Uxler in, in, in wine language. But it's like uh, the bricks is a very clear indicator how nutrient dense a food is. So bricks plus vitamin C uh, must be very high. Then you have an excellent soil, excellent quality. You can't do that with a bad soil and not even in a greenhouse. <laughs> And uh, then you might measure nitrate. And if nitrate is high, you, you have crappy quality. And so that's your certification. That's very simple to measure <laughs> and can be done by uh, the customers in the, in the shop. So they can really measure if they get crap or if they get something from a good living soil. And the good living soil restores the water, the groundwater, doesn't pollute it. And then also we will have the rainwater soaking in and, and uh, refilling the, the, the soil. And uh, then we have evaporation even in the dry times. And then we have clouds forming and uh, all that is getting alive again. Yes, which and is, it's, it's all about circulation, actually. Um, I think we should, it's wonderful that this is your, your deep expertise. That's where it's wonderful to have you talking about these things. I think we might go back just a bit to what you said about the metal plow uh, destroying somehow the fertility. I'm reminded of Schauberger spending so many years developing the copper plow, but to understand what the difference is, uh, essentially, the issue is to short out the magnetic currents in the soil and thus deplete fertility. So to understand why that metal plow is so damaging the life force of the soil, because it's literally destroying the magnetic circulation. In fact, the word in electrical engineering to, to, to kill or to quench an electric circuit is actually defined by, you know, an elemental that touches something metal is dead. <laughs> ah, ah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an issue. Yeah, great to, to remind me of that. Schauberger, of course, I'm, I'm really uh, adoring his work. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, I was born the day when he died, so it's like I, uh, <laughs> wow. uh, I, I, I love his work, but it's, it's beyond my capacity to understand, I have to say. 
it's so deep what he has written it's just amazing you must really study this very very yeah. deeply well, and, and i think i think it's appropriate here to state the core principle which is to restore centripetal force is by definition to restore charge collapse in mm -hmm. other words which is the only definition of the ability of anything to implode there has to be a path for charge out through center and we now know what that path is it's called planckfire.com the title of my new book and so once you restore the ability for charge to collapse that is the origin of all neg entropy and self-organization in all fertility which is why a seed doesn't germinate unless it electrically can suck and that's why things like therify and stone circles and pyramids are famous for seed treatment restoring germination rate that, that many believe that stone circles were actually used to trigger seed germination and therify plasma there are many ways to do that but essentially anything that makes the seed electrically centripetal that is the key moment yeah sorry to interrupt uh, so, uh, that's what i love about your work it is highly scientific it's practical at the same time and we have tools for this so we can yes. actually uh, do this work and and i'm watering so i must be careful you never get the water really out of it uh, <laughs> but it's uh, absolutely fantastic and also the the therify this this really powerful plasma where we have done some work to to uh, treat seeds uh, just anecdotal so far but it's like um, these are tools that are available and you develop more and more now so and all the young people joining in I, i'm so stunned i look a lot of your, of your videos and if people ask me what should i study uh, i tell them well study dan winter stuff it's like it's it's the most advanced you can do and so many applications and if we want to get to a good future for all and that's absolutely feasible. I've, I've made a vision for a future, so everything is there for a good future for all. And the work you are doing is sort of central into getting it going into a very powerful and fast way. And this plays together with things that are already changing. There are millions of great permaculture projects around the world. And even if people don't understand the things we're discussing now, but if they are doing this uh, from like capturing the water and uh, well, caring for their gardens with love, that's also, it's, it's the same thing. So yes, that, that movement is really taking off. Just on the subject of the imploder there, that triploder you have there, just to, to summarize the pure principle again, that um, that vortex in that triploder uh, will have much more effect if the water is hard water or mineral rich because it makes it piezo and that makes the vortex capacitively implosive. And that was key to biodynamics. They used a rock powder and that was key to Schauberger. And the other thing is that on that tripoder vortex, note that it's directional because the discharge side is the nuts. So the screw head yeah. is water in, the screw nuts are the water yeah. out. Yeah, yeah I know. It. This little nozzle is the way out, isn't it? Right. And uh, you will, you may find if the water is hard water, then it will definitely be powerful electrically. But it also, if the water is not hard water, if you add just a little bit of rock powder or piezo, it will dramatically increase the effect actually because that makes the vortex uh, implosive electrically capacitively yeah that's what i was thinking to to add some uh quartz dust because yeah. that would be the the most appropriate Piezo. and probably also like the uh there is uh ian campbell from new zealand who has done amazing work with restoring soil so everybody looking up even campbell new zealand farmer or nz farmer he has some videos out uh, and he's restoring soil in record time and he says that the silicium is is a key in all of that and so yeah. there we are always in the same direction and specifically also the um if you if you add lime uh, to soil it has benefits but it's also destructive so if we charge it in this way, I guess it becomes beneficial to plants, even applying it on the leaf as a leaf spray, uh, because a lot of great benefits can be achieved and, and charging it would be absolutely yes. uh, enhancing that effect, I guess. 
Yes, and it, we should say, of course, silicon SiO2 is what quartz is, but uh, we should mention here, uh, Laurent, our biodynamic science genius who we introduced to you. Um, Laurent uh, does something now with that same device, that triploder, if you take apart the inner cone and put just a thin film of gold in the tip inside, and then uh, he uses a layer of the of uh, a beeswax, actually, which is high dielectric. And then the biodynamic preparation. Uh, so, for example, a trace amount of uh, a quartz or um, or supposing the farmer needs to buy phosphate. Well, if he puts a little phosphate inside the inner cone, which then electrically charges the water at the tip of the vortex inside the gold foil, inside the beeswax, perfect implosive high dielectric capacitance. Uh, Lauren, is clear, you, you can eliminate the need to buy fertilizer if you zap the soil with the signature of the charge of what's missing. Yeah, yeah, it, that's a good uh, segue to something I wanted to point out because through uh, the politics that are uh, prevalent at the moment, uh, Europe is getting deindustrialized. So the big uh, chemical companies, uh, Germany, have said, well, we, we've had enough, they leave for the Far East. And uh, so uh, this is a window of opportunity. So people listening from who are in agricultural business, and many are, uh, please shift to become a, like a regenerative uh, agrochemical company uh, that also considers these uh, well, effects that Dan has just pointed out, making it through information. You don't have the high uh, production cost, but you can advise farmers and like deliver all the services around like what uh, trace elements is needed. So we, we need to look at 80 plus elements. So that's amazing. Yeah. And um, that's the, something... the, Germans, the Germans often call it information, but actually uh, electrical engineers term for that would be a uh, capacitive coupling of the symmetry of a frequency signature actually. So the, the, the charge cu is coupled because the frequency signature of whatever is missing, the phosphate, web, it, if you put it in the center mm -hmm. inside the pH electric vortex, it'll be strongly embedded in the, the water molecular array, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is amazing. And also that uh, the biodynamic farmers have sort of figured this out long ago yeah, and with, right. with their making their preparations. That's and right. Steiner got it right. <laughs> and essentially, we call the tripoder the vortex Schauberger's dream, and it is the ideal biodynamic tool. And that's what actually Laurent. And by the way, so we have a, a, a preliminary biodynamic tripoder we're developing. And then we actually showed that you could eliminate the need for uh, chemicals and chlorine and shrimp farming and animal farming. It's amazing. The biodynamic aspect of this is just taking off. Um, yeah. I suggest, uh, since you prepared some slides and I prepared some slides, maybe maybe I'll do just a couple first and then you have a nice little show. Is that good? or, or... That would be good. Uh, there is one thing I want to mention uh, before that, because sure. like there is Absolutely. So, so uh, there is stunning new research from uh, Dr. David Johnson, New Mexico State University. That man is really uh, absolutely fantastic. And he has found out that the main uh, parameter to uh, like uh, describe uh, the yield of a field is the ratio of fungal to bacterial microorganisms. This is knowledge that is absolutely stunning and so that should get go hand in hand with like enhancing the the biophysical uh, fields but then doing the biology right and it will thrive in such conditions but you need to start it so get it a start up uh, activate the soil before and so if that all goes hand in hand uh, and you stop uh, the deep plowing and uh, the 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 flat plowing is done or grubbering is done with copper tools and, and things like that. So then we are really uh, going ahead very fast. Nice. So say, say again the name of that uh, from New Mexico, that professor. Dr. David Johnson. David uh, Johnson. We must look great, that up. Great presentations by him, uh, public uh, in, in YouTube. And I can strongly recommend. He works with Dr. Elaine Ingham, who is the most famous uh, great uh, soil biologist. 
I see. Ah, that's great. She was well, that's for university. She was kicked out of university by asking questions about biology in soil in an environment where everybody wanted chemistry for the profit. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, but, but to you, please. Well, that's good. Well, that's good work. And, and that fits then. So I wanted to share just a little bit about what our Bloom the Desert project was. Um, let's see. Oh, this is Dr. Ralph Otterpole. Uh, <laughs> are, are you seeing the Bloom the Desert now? Yeah, yeah, it's there. Okay. So just to say, this is fractalfield.com slash Bloom the Desert, also at bloomthedesert.com. So what we did is we combined the imploder uh, with Roger Green's help with um, effective microorganisms, EM, and agricultural ormies. And we documented the ability to actually to literally bloom the desert in Dubai and documented the ability to reduce salt in the desert soil. So that's that's an introduction here that uh, the original Bloom the Desert project now is expanded. And, and that then relates to... Uh, Let's see, now I have the keynote. So this is some examples of the Therify device being used for plant growth, which it's pretty well known for. Um, the point being that just before germination, in a few days before germination, if you zap the seed, and the seed is actually vibrating piezoelectrically, the same way you can zap a piezo rock powder, like a quartz sand or quartz uh, powder, you zap with a Therify, and that quartz sand zapped will have tremendous effect. For example, you sprinkle a little bit of piezoically zapped rock powder in a dirty pond, and it will most often sediment dramatically rather quickly. Uh, so uh, what I wanted to mention here was our work with uh, Agni Hotra and Dolman and Stone Circles, and I'm going to slide number 141 here. One moment. So... Uh, just to mention that not only did the Olmec walk 600 or 60 miles to get the right high dielectric stone so that the actual stones they used for their dolmen could be used for the presence of ancestors. We now know what that is. The presence of ancestors is the longitudinal array, which is why the kids who start seeing with their eyes also start seeing their dead ancestors and their parents freak out. But in the East, it's well known and common. So that's coherent longitudinal interferometry, the importance of the dolmen to restore that circulation. So this is the story of the Olmec, the Veracoca, and using ancestral. So the same circulation of charge with a dolmen and stone circle that enables uh, ancestor memory, the song line dreaming track, also enables the circulation of fertility. And the, the famous example of Agni Hotra. So uh, by placing the plasma, is Agni Hotra plasma or Therify plasma, either at a magnetic line cross, you get the four wave mixing called phase conjugation, and that implodes and creates centripetal force. And Agni Hotra, the Homa, as they call it, has been known, for example, to restore literally a, a, a Garden of Eden in a desert area in Poland. We were there. So they actually put a uh, an underground large copper or gold pyramid below, actually buried. And then they, of course, put the plasma burning ghee in the uh, copper pyramid, all phase conjugate to plasma, and that um, is done precisely at sunrise sunset, which enables the four wave mixing. And that is actually the physics of phase conjugation, a prime example of restored centripetal forces, very parallel to our work with labyrinths. And even the concept of the stupa in the East, uh, they, you know, modern day times, they sometimes build a stupa with iron, the metal rebar in concrete, and these things don't work. Uh, the ancient ones were high dielectric, layered with gold, and they were fabulous capacitors. So these were literally orgone accumulators. So this is just some examples of restoring centripetal force by magnetic lines. Now, I mentioned about the, the valve in the valley where the, the druid shaman controlled the fertility. Um, and stone fences being used to restore fertility. I mentioned the Ferrify Agni uh, uh, So that restored magnetic circulation is really the key. And uh, that's related to all the work you're doing with restoring the electricity of the soil. So please, now uh, your turn. You have a, a, a slideshow, I believe. Is that right, Rob, Professor? Well, yeah, I, I'll show a, f a few slides about the foundations because uh, very few people are teaching the principles. It's always details, 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 and people yeah. get lost. And uh, we need the principles. 
And I have a presentation in my uh, YouTube channel, just my name and uh, YouTube, uh, you'll find it easily. And uh, Nexus Engineering, it's a full uh, class with like five, six lectures on all these issues. And one of them is regenerative agriculture uh, and also intentional communities or uh, um, garden communities. That's my older book now. And uh, so that's just out in English uh, because we need the social environment in the rural to become really attractive. So we need attractors for people too. <laughs> right. And, Attractful attractor. uh, Absolutely. The yes. thing is, what you said about Agni Hotra, we have just finished some uh, a, a sort of pre-trials in an African country uh, with Agni Hotra on, 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 on corn. And uh, that country has a huge problem because corn doesn't grow anymore. So it's so like uh, systems are destroyed. And uh, so the uh, first results were really, really good. And I have uh, well taken part in many Agnihotra uh, 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 rituals. And I can perceive this energy going kilometers. Yep. And even if a person that is not really experienced does it because it's sort of culturally embedded, it's like it's working without having a, a powerful a geomancer because it's sort of uh, done millions and millions of times even every day I guess and that makes it very powerful and you comment about the ancestors that is uh, sort of something uh, there we have a problem so it's one is to get in touch with them uh, what I did yesterday so I got in touch with people uh, but a lot of them are traumatized because they were killed in war and so we have ancestors that are really unhappy and they seem to play tricks on people in the region, uh, probably to make those aware of their presence or whatever. I know an example of a farm in the, in the far west of Germany to, towards Belgium, and that's a very poor region. And there's a, a, a biodynamic farm, small one, and it wasn't working well. So it did everything right um, but things didn't go well. And a friend of mine, uh, who is also doing uh, geomancy, uh, she, she uh, has developed prayers for like uh, making the ancestors uh, or the, the, the deceased people in the region uh, to uh, set them free or to, to like exactly. make yeah. them. Uh, or to well finally be successful in that <laughs> in that death. <laughs> and see, that's another case. Whereas, if we understood the science behind, so the science behind Agnihotra, the physics is clear. If you enable charge collapse, that implosion becomes negentropic centripetal and fertile. And so it's actually about implosive capacitance and implosive magnetics. That's why Agni Hotra works. And then it propagates in that fractal dodeca array, which is a an array of longitudinal coherent nodes, literally dream time, song line, dreaming track. And But then in terms of ancestor memory, uh, reflecting also on the fact that many, including uh, Medrick here in Perpignan, have commented that Therify has been useful in releasing stuck ghosts repeatedly. And again, this should be physics. This is not a mystery. No, we know mm -hmm. exactly what it is. At death, normally healthy death is a black hole, which is why the death visions are contagious and why the Heinrich Cluve form constants work, goldenmean.info slash immortality. So there is enough centripetal inertia so the memory can be carried to the implosive center point of the blood and the glands and then propagate into the longitudinal array only if it's become coherently longitudinal in propagation. Well, if there's not enough centripetal force, for example, dying in war, dying in hospital, dying in trauma, then that plasma entity is unable to be distributed unable to get centripetal enough to actually, and this is the physics of releasing ghosts, it re literally requires an implosion. Yeah. And yeah. if ancestral plasma is not being distributed, you're right, there goes your fertility. Yeah, and and for me, it was pretty convincing that people actually measured the loss of, uh, of, of weight in, 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 in dying people. So the moment um, the, the, the soul yes. is leaving, 
uh, it's around 11 grams or something. So well, it's, it's very controversial because it varies, you know, how much soul is there? Actually, now that we know how to measure what is a soul, the emission of that longitudinal coherence, the lucid dreamers, I would predict, will take a little more weight with them. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's true. <laughs> it's actually coherent electrical inertia that has mass and the soul in that sense as a longitudinal node would have some inertia so that's real uh the other thing to be pointed out is that um you know it, it, james de mayo did that study showing the spread of patriarchy causes or is directly statistically correlate to the spread of deserts. Now, the physics there is instructive that when you have the kind of patriarchy that makes touch illegal, that makes rain illegal, literally, because oh. when, wa when water vapor is not allowed to touch because there's no centripetal force, the seed, the cloud seed is actually the centrip, the cleat of seed of centripetal force, which is why a child can put a hole in a cloud with their pure intention. Yeah, well, that's all really amazing. Uh, and for like the, the scientific description of these uh, phenomena is absolutely important because yeah. we, yeah. we need to merge experimental and like uh, old tradition with a, with a sound scientific understanding. Then we will make headway. So if we are uh, able to describe it, we will get many people in because we yeah. need to include the scientific thinking. Exactly. I love the scientific thinking and I hate the misuse of it for like, just making profit. So the, the, the open-minded uh, science is absolutely great. And the anecdotal things that you can explain then uh, by, by uh, equations, uh, the anecdote I was uh, uh, um, starting with was of, of the biodynamic farm uh, west of, in, in the west of Germany, and nothing really developed well. And when that friend of mine, she she sort of relieved the field of hundreds of deceased people that were traumatized, and that was around the only thing she did. It was from two different wars, and it was many, often it's hundreds or thousands of people that were killed, uh, most often uh, almost kids. <clears throat> and uh, this is something where we can really uh, see that that farm that was doing very badly, there was a drought in that summer following this release, uh, and this farm was having like 70% of their of the yield and the neighbors had nothing. So the neighbors had complete failure. And this farm, after this release of these traumatized beings, was still doing very well. And the, the wife of the farmer was recovering. She had been seriously ill. The children came back. They had no contact previously. So it's all linked. Yeah. And having scientific uh, explanation for that is really good for me because i, I as i said i like the, the scientific yes. thinking <laughs> and the aboriginals absolutely knew knew that if you were not conversing every day with ancestor memory you had no soul you had no culture literally <laughs> if, if you weren't in dialogue with ancestral memory and what they meant by that i mean ancestral memory was god for an aboriginal and what they that they mean is the circulation in that array which is the media within which the collective unconscious lives. It's the media for lucid dreaming and it's the media for fertility. If that circulation is not working in centripetal, well, yes, exactly. That's the point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I would share a few slides if good, you don't good. mind. Please do, please, yes. Yeah. So uh, I would uh, show just a few pictures. So I don't want to make this too long because I have a full presentation on the principles of regenerative agriculture. And I brought in Dr. David Johnson and uh, also some other great stuff. And the physical, uh, uh, I must bring in uh, still. So I'm working on that. Uh, but uh, now, if uh, I show this slide, you, you can see it? Yes, yes, plowed soil. OK, yeah. Well, that's uh, the plowing destroys the soil. So that's the soil structure is, is getting dead and like uh, iron plows will be uh, making this worse uh, so only flat plowing or grubbering uh, that will be fine 
And if you look at a soil uh, that is not plowed and uh, worked in direct seeding, this soil is always covered. It will soak up the rain if rain is falling. Um, the other soil, if it's raining, it's just running off uh, or evaporating. So it doesn't really go into the soil very much. We see this everywhere. And that's called erosion. And the, 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 the fertile soil is, is wash, uh, soil is washed away. <laughs> And um, then if you uh, look at the soil below such a, uh, a, a, a farm, uh, this is a farm in southern Germany that does regenerative and organic combined since uh, six years, seven years now. And uh, absolutely great soil structure, very good yields, and the farm is doing well. And uh, now the farmer uh, deceased, uh, Josef Hägler, unfortunately, uh, but his daughters are taking over. So the farms often don't have uh, the, the, the kids that want to go on, but in regenerative or organic farming, this is a lot more common because that's exciting. And now, very briefly, I have uh, compiled the seven elements of regenerative agriculture. And that will be sort of my, my final thing to say, uh, sort of. Um, the seven elements... Uh, the first one, improvement of soil biology. And that's what I said. This is the work of, of Dr. Elaine Ingham, uh, Dr. David Johnson from, uh, from US. Uh, and they showed that the fungal to bacterial ratio is crucial. And they also developed some uh, soil activation composts that are helpful in restoring the soil. <clears throat> and compost tea can be used for that as well. Uh, but this is absolutely crucial for having uh, success. And then uh, the second point is uh, to supplement missing macro and micronutrients in the soil. So micro uh, elements or trace elements, as I said, 80 plus need to be looked at. Some are too many, some are lacking. If there is no lithium, uh, we will not have uh, well, uh, nitrogen fixation because it, uh, no, if you don't have molybdenum, there is no uh, nitrogen fixation. Uh, or if there is no lithium, uh, the people eating the food can't experience happiness. And so that's a crucial issue. And um, nitrogen in mineral form as nitrate or ammonia, and that is the NPK, the commercial fertilizers, and the nitrogen is enormously energy consuming, and it does not, not make any sense at all. So it's destructive to soil life, it is polluting the groundwater, and uh, it is making the farmers poor because it's the most expensive of all the chemicals. And uh, so that can be left uh, away right away if you manage to get the soil alive again. And that is something what can work in the first year even. And so the third point is minimal disturbance of the soil. Do not plow, at least not deep, or do not dig in gardening. And who doesn't hate the digging? And it doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> And then you should have a permanent soil cover and deep rooting, even over winter for those living in winter seasons, and hedges and agroforestry for uh, protection from wind, space for animals, birds, and insects. And then, uh, uh, sorry for that, uh, point five, uh, bullet point five, uh, we need species rich green manure. And deep rooting ones, flat rooting ones, uh, plants that are tolerating uh, moisture, uh, others tolerating drought because we never know what is coming. And these deep roots, they bring uh, humus into the deep layers and the soil becomes like a sponge and will soak up the rain. And now the second slide, uh, that is point six, keep livestock in proportion to arable land and use rotational grazing. What is also well called mob grazing, daily portions, and uh, was actually described by André Voisin in, in Normandy uh, in, in France 
uh, like in the 1950s, and he is still today national hero in Cuba because he managed to help Cubans a lot by this method because it is restoring soil. Uh, so animals can help in restoring soil, but they must be getting out of the cages, often horrible conditions, and so the, the animals should have a good life, free uh, ranging and in, in uh, rotational grazing, and so then animals have a good life and they can help uh, restoring the soil. Would you, then, uh, would you spell that name again, and Voisin? Uh, André Voisin, like neighbor. And, uh, but the, the most famous person who was inspired by, by André Voisin is Alan Savory. And he became world famous by a TED talk that was watched several million times. I think I saw it. Yes, rotation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yes. fantastic. And it's yeah, absolutely wonderful. true. Wonderful. It's true. And it works with farms. I, I meet many, many farmers with all my presentations. And it does work. And it's traditional as well. Right. Um, yeah. And uh, this is great. something where we get a great uh, sort of uh, well supply of, of soil life, especially from cows with their horns. So we are with the biodynamics again. Yes. And uh, we need the cows. So it's like whether you eat them or not, we, we need to keep them. I see you have the names below on your slide. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it, it's all there. So those good. are all uh, great people and also good. reference to, to my book and the, the lecture I was mentioning. And then uh, point seven, and that's the last one, but not the least include agroforestry and the agroforestry is absolutely crucial because we need to get the trees back into the land if there is no trees anymore it will be very hard to restore rain and uh, uh, cloud formation and a balanced climate uh, what once again is a, 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 well, a factor of uh, well a functioning water cycle that we need anyway for our survival. And I'm strongly promoting agroforestry with fruit trees and food trees, like the sweet chestnut, walnut, uh, hazel, and uh, many others. So that will be also producing wood. You can use that for wood gas to produce uh, electricity, heat cooling, charcoal. Uh, the good old uh, steam engine will be revived for rural areas because it's very simple, very efficient, and can be built in a local workshop. Yeah, and uh, also to repeat, because it's very, very important, uh, we need high BRICS value, so nutrient density and vitamin C and very low nitrate, and we don't need any further certification. This can only be achieved with excellent soil, with doing everything right, and if you spray biocides, you will not achieve that because you're killing your soil life. So that's, that's the uh, key things here in uh, Regen uh, uh, Ag. And uh, there are other things and, as well, but uh, that would be like for, for uh, another discussion. Uh, so it's like there are many great people in this. And I want to wrap up with this. I want to point out to the key person in um, uh, regenerative agriculture. And that is Gabe Brown, who has uh, written the book From Dirt to Soil. Absolutely stunning book. And uh, as I don't find it right in the mo at the moment, but he's, he's pretty well known. Also, YouTube uh, uh, comments. And to wrap this up and to make us understand the magnitude of all these issues, um, I want to quote Professor Dr. William Albrecht, uh, one of the most famous soil scientists. He was with the University of Missouri in, uh, up in, until in the 1950s. And uh, I want to uh, bring a quote from him. And uh, this is, uh, once again, NPK is nitrogen phosphor phosphorus potassium. And the bad guy in here is the nitrogen. Some soils will not need uh, phosphate or potassium, 
be it in like um, uh, energy form or in uh, um, actual uh, chemical, uh, that's uh, another dis discussion. But I want to read the quote because that's showing why our society is degrading so fast on one end. And um, I'm still very optimistic because I see all the great stuff going on, all the millions of great projects. So we will make it, but we need to understand the stupidity of what has been done. And that is not quite arbitrary, but uh, was pretty good business. So. NPK formulas, as legislated and enforced by state departments of agriculture, mean malnutrition, attack by insects, bacteria and fungi, weed takeover, crop loss in dry weather, and general loss of mental, mental acuity in the population, leading to degenerative metabolic disease and early death. Wow. And so <laughs> that's, that's like the, the funeral for commercial agriculture right there. <laughs> it would have been even in the 1940s. This was in the U.S. Congress in uh, uh, in uh, 1936. Modern Miracle Man, uh, Dr. Charles Northam. And it was ignored. So we can assume it is. Uh, well, it is not by just making some mistake, but it was like recognized what a good business is it, it is yeah. to destroy agriculture and sell them more and more pesticides and herbicides and more chemicals and have a ill population where you can throw billions of, uh, of drugs uh, and, and all that. So it's, it's just a, yeah. a crazy business model for idiots and we need to overcome this now and it's happening fast uh, fast track north america is leading unfortunately as a german i have to admit uh, us is leading this 20 years ahead of europe regenerative agriculture but a lot of the stuff had been developed in the german speaking world in the 1950s and even before steiner 1920 more than 100 years ago he brought up the biodynamic farming, and uh, that is actually something we have lost. Uh, <laughs> we lost a hundred years, basically. Yes. Yeah, but let's uh, let me wrap up with this, and uh, well, get the book of uh, uh, Gabe Brown, "Dirt to Soil." Ah, uh, here it is as a final slide. Uh, "Dirt to Soil," absolutely stunning. And uh, I hope, is this visible? Is it big enough? Yes, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yes, yes, looking All good. All right, so I'll end Dirt. this presentation and <laughs> back to you, Dan. Dirt to soil, it's beautiful. So you really yeah. did a beautiful over. I can see that we should do more on this and that people would like to see the rest of your slideshow and talk to you some more. This is very, very important work. You know, we did a lot on this physics and electrical engineering science behind Steiner, you know, in that it is said that Wilhelm Reich didn't know what implosive capacitance was, so he called it orgone. And Steiner didn't know what capacitive coupling to biology was, so he called it etheric formative force. But actually, once we look at the science behind things like the biodynamic vortex and see the physics, the beauty and importance of that work is stunning. And the fact that if you put at the center of the vortex, whatever your farm needs, any trace mineral your farm needs, just put that at the center of the vortex in the implosion and spray that on the soil and the leaf, you don't need to buy that fertilizer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I want to point out, we need more people that do this as a business. Yeah. So there is a huge lack of entrepreneurial people. We have lost a whole generation to, to bloody uh, smartphones and, and, and nonsense uh, series on, on Netflix. So we need people that are standing in reality and more and more are joining in. So there are young people that are now really kicking ass, and but they need to get together as young people. So we oldies are not good company for them often or not at, le at least not uh, in their everyday uh, environment and that's why I'm promoting a garden community so that a lot of people can get together like maybe 150 minimum to have a good social life interesting place and a lot of small enterprise and so instead of these uh, two big uh, uh, 
agrochemical companies that are sort of dominating policies. That's why you get bashed when you're uh, sort of <laughs> talking like we talk. And I don't mind. Uh, I demand fair play. I demand fair play. I demand fair play. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so we need to stand for ourselves and not being uh, like pushed and even death threats. Well, if I die, I think I can die successfully. And I play Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they said if, if, you, if you take on the agribusiness here in France, you need a bulletproof car. But that's before. Now that, now that the information is shareable as pure science and it's very empowering, and, and, and the agribusiness model is a failed model. It is clear. You yeah, cannot... And, and... And they know, and they know. And so now there is the opportunity because these companies are leaving Europe anyway because of high energy costs. Uh, and that is the opportunity for entrepreneurial people who have a sound scientific background, but also the, the wider picture being systems thinkers. We don't have systems thinkers, but it can be learned. So we can relearn that. Children can do that. Five years olds can all do that. And we can get back to that in a minute by going brainstorming. And so, <laughs> the, the systems thinker, it was called general systems theory in my day. And uh, I was called a systems analyst when I was with IBM. But what that means is you see the big picture. And the big picture sees a large field of centripetal energy, which we today we call it a coherent fractal longitudinal array. In the past, they called it ancestor memory or collective unconscious, but it's the same physics, actually. And it's a solid, serious, measurable physics that needs to be taught. And you're right. Now we need people that distribute biodynamic vortexes, for example, and entrepreneurs. I absolutely agree. This is a beautiful thing. That's our next step. We're, we're on the case. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I see the young people following you. I have something similar. I also have, have uh, quite a few people following I see too few that are really doing something in practice yet, but uh, more and more are coming. And uh, for the craziness that is going on, it seems to be a necessary step of an evolving society. Uh, there is this uh, great work of uh, Ken Wilber, Spiral Dynamics. It's not very well known today, unfortunately, but I have reread it now and I was stunned because the level we have now that's the sort of the the green meme or something where many people are in what has its upsides but i read that one of the the, the traits of this meme is social construction of reality mm. they do social construction of reality and well mess it up with science or pretend it is science and that's why we are in this trap. So people are believing this nonsense and they believe this is reality while they are hallucinating. Yeah. But people are evolving beyond that level. And from that level on, you have access to all other levels. What we don't have in the green mean, because they don't have access to science. They don't have access to uh, getting things done. And when we develop further, what many of us are already, you have access to it all, and that makes you so incredulous. How can the others be so blind? But we when, should when have connect, some, when you connect have some, some mercy with them. <laughs> connect physics to spirituality, exactly. Reminds me of the book Earthing, that access to ground is actually access to fractality for electrical engineers and psychologists being grounded. And what we mean by earthing then is actually the embedding in that charge distribution which is a beautiful yeah, lesson. Yeah. It's perfect. Wonderful, perfect. wonderful. Yeah, let me just look if I have something. I had some notes here. Uh, I love your uh, explanation, uh, like the 3D pixel of the universe. Like that was absolutely great. We need concepts like this that, that are sort of uh, bomb, directly understandable. And I think the idea that is, is that in PlankFire.com, yeah, the, the Planck yeah. is the pixel. And the propagation of that pixel is the climax of fractality, golden ratio times Planck. And that's actually perfected distribution in the longitudinal array and, and the physics yeah. of all centripetal force because charge collapse is the cause of all negentropy, gravity, consciousness, and life itself. Yeah, absolutely stunning. And, and this is something I'm, I'm really looking forward to your book. 
And uh, I, I would like to plug my book again, if I may, uh, Garden yes. Communities. And, and tell, uh, tell people how to get your material, please tell people. Uh, yeah, well, in, in uh, Europe, you will get it in uh, bookshops uh, and also otherwise in uh, US and Canada. Uh, it is in uh, in the usual big chains and you can get it as ebook. So we don't have print in US, uh, but we have print in Europe. Um, and so uh, my new book uh, that is also translated at the moment is uh, Garden Communities for the New Earth. And I've included the spiritual aspects into this. And it's basically a, a vision for a good future because I have realized by researching that there is no real good feasible vision for a good future for all. So that's why we follow idiots, so to say. Where's we the vision? The Where's the vision? <laughs> yes, I made it. And so now we exactly. can re regenerative agriculture is one of the most important aspects to survive physically, to have good food, to have get yeah. away from the no. loss of mental acuity and things yes. like that. And so that book will come out and I will uh, send it to you as soon as it's done. And maybe we can also uh, talk again. It's such such fun to talk to you and uh, so inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> I think we should have more fun. That's great. And if you send me some links, so I will put in the YouTube show notes links to more of uh, Professor Ralph Otter Pohl's work. So when send me those links, I'll put them in the show notes and they will be just below this video. So thank you for working with us, Ralph. And you're right, we must do more. Eventually, we're going to get together again, and we're going to do a fun gig over in Germany, as you suggested. I think it's a fun fun idea. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. And uh, yeah, let's, let's keep in touch and do more. There's so many things developing. And now I'll go out into the garden and do a little bit of garden work, because like, <laughs> Having both desk and garden is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Getting grounded. Wonderful. So we, yeah. we must do, do more of this. So in, another time we're going to do more of your slides and tell more of your story because it's so important. Thank you again, Dr. Ralph Otterpole. Thank you, Dan. And it's a, it's an honor to be able to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> Blessing. And we all have that good German blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, winter, winter. <laughs> <laughs>